Well hello, I'm back over at Dave. So Dave's my neighbour and back before Christmas we put up a post with Dave with his VR. So how you going Dave? Good mate, self. Good. Lovely day mate. Yep. So I heard Dave starting the car up this morning. Last time we spoke, um, pre-Christmas, you'd basically bought an engine um, complete that had some dramas and you were pulling it out and we talked about getting the engine done and then of course Christmas gets in the way, all those sorts of things. So give us a quick rundown just on where you ended up with the engine and then we'll go into all the other things we've done. So it's been nine months. Yep, it has. So when we pulled it out, pulled it down to the drop lifter, pretty standard LS thing, made some calls, obviously before Christmas, nobody's gonna have a look at something like that at that point in time. War speed's where we decided to go for the engine. So just after Christmas, once he reopened, we sent it straight up there. Um, he got the engine done pretty quick. We had the engine back by about February. Um, we put the engine back in the car, but life gets in the way. You don't have time to work on it every single day of the week. Um, so tell us about that. So you ended up going into a new business. We did, we did. We bought Leisure Coast Marine at Fairy Meadow. So a friend of mine and I are now running that. So that now takes up a whole heap of time where when I used to work from home, like how it does, you could steer some work away a little bit and work on the car a little bit more, but a, a proper, proper shop now. I am stuck there for many hours of the day, so the hours for the car just don't seem to exist anymore. So if you need a boat, Leisure Coast Marine, Ferry That's Meadow. It. That's it. So got the engine back, got it in. So you, you obviously, we talked before about engineers and all sorts of things, and I know just from obviously being around, some of the issues you had when you got it going was it was cooling, so you made some mods there with your, your fans and stuff, so tell us about that. Yep, so we had a custom radiator made for it, and we used the Hyundai i30 fans originally, and we found that they just did not move enough air to keep it cool. So that is now a, an FG single fan on it, and that works perfect. We have had no overheat issues whatsoever. And that was primarily just when it was stationary with the air on and all It that was stuff. fine to drive with the Hyundai fans, but because we've got the aircon working, and it doesn't have an aircon fan on the front, it's relying purely on the engine's fan. But then when we found a hot day, bit of traffic, slow moving, aircon's on, it's making heat in front of the radiator plus the engine's heat. It wasn't overheating, but it was it was getting higher than it would, so then it should. should. So it was gonna potentially be a problem yeah. down the track. So you sorted that out, yep. and then you, last time we talked about engineers and the complications of that, so you're working down that track now. So yep. you've built an engine box, uh, Yep, so I, I've, I've spoken to an engineer and he's had a quick run over the car since it's going back together and he's given us some things. So even though we've got air conditioning for Demister, we still have to have heater. So that's what I'm about to have a crack at today is doing some heater hoses. Um, we've, we've made an air box that once he has a look at it again, hopefully that will be sufficient for what he's got to do. Um, we still have to make the shift to show what gear it's in at all times and light up at night time. Um, we've got our 100 mil ground clearance. We've got our speedo working now. We went to cons for a run-in tune yesterday. So he's now made the taco accurate and the speedo accurate. So that's another tick off the list for the engineering part of it. So just with that, so you're running the factory ECU? Factory ECU, yeah. Yep. Yeah, L98 much, BE factory ECU. Yeah, pretty much a stock set up, but obviously you've got to make mods to get everything in. That's right. Yeah, so the, the, the plan is to have you know fully engineered um, LS 100% legal drive in Queensland if you want to. And part of that, obviously, with the ground clearance, so you, you knew you wanted to run 20, so from an engineering point of view, you put the 20s on it now to work within that. Yeah, so obviously you change wheel size, it changes speedo. Yep. So that's why we've hunted down some 20s, we've put some on it, we've chosen a tyre that suits the car, so now that's why we've, that's what's taken so long to get it over to cons to get it tuned because we wanted to have the right wheel on it, otherwise our speedo is going to be set for something else, and then we're back to going yeah. back again. So, emission-wise, so do you have to do an emission check, or because you're... It will have to go somewhere for an emissions check, but because the engine is standard, and so is the management, and so is the manifold, it doesn't have to go to the bo go to Botany for a proper one with the RMS itself. Yep. It just needs a check. Yeah, and that's why the enclosed box. and. Just to give you a heads up, Dave's made all this. Dave's a bit of a handyman at home, so he's made all this and he bought a TIG in the last, what, couple of years? Couple of years, yeah. And all made out of aluminium and all TIG welded. And 
So what's in there? Is a pod in there? Like there's the a pod filter. There's a cane in there. pod, pod filter. Pod inside there, yeah. All enclosed and obviously you've still got your, your back to the VR washer bottle now because you had the other one before, didn't you? No, that was that was the overflow bottle that was oh, on, okay. the, on the other thing. So we're back to that because the Hyundai R30 fan set up had a what had a overflow bottle okay. part of it, but this one doesn't. Right, so that's. Is there anything else in the engine bay you've been up to that, that you've either been playing with that might be able to help someone else doing the same thing? Probably only the fact that the aircon's gas now and works. Where, where last time yep. it was in the process of still putting it in. And you had to make all your own fittings and stuff for that. Yep. Yep. So speedy S pairs, very cheap for some hose and some fittings. So what were that again? Speedy S pairs, very cheap. Speedy air. Speedy air. Yeah. You were a bit quick. I didn't get it. Yep. Okay. Sorry. Old age, mate. You know. Yep. Yep. Um, so you can, if you want to film in here. Probably come back in on that, but so we've made our hoses just come out down around the side, and we've actually come out inside here. So we've got our service valves behind the front bar, okay, just to make it a bit tidier in the bay. Yep, and then it comes back in and comes onto the compressor just in here. So we covered all that last time, yep, so we won't get into that. So that pretty much finishes up what you've been up to there, yep. Now I know the next door that. A few months back now you you would end up scoring another one of these a rusty yep. one yep so just tell us in a, a minute or so exactly what happened there and why and how and so just always scrolling gumtree seeing what's about for a bargain and there was an ss a genuine ss a hsv enhanced ss one of these that was only five minutes up the road and those guys had decided to do the motor up in it pulled the engine out the motor, the gearbox out left the bonnet off it left the driver's windows down pushed it outside in the rain and that was in 2010 and it sat there ever since, right next to the lake. So it was very rusty. Yep. You can see the driver's seat over there, what it looked like because of the window being down outside in the rain for over 10 years. So your goal with that was, as I know, so trim and we'll get to that in a minute. Yep. So um, scored a long range tank, which you moved on. Yep. Um, but primarily you were chasing the outside kit? Oh, pro initially chasing nothing. Just <laughs> seen it on Gumtree and went, well, there's a pile of parts we could use yeah. and it was cheap enough so we bought it and then looking at it in the yard went oh why don't we why don't we do a full ss rack okay so you picked up front and rear front and rear, skirts, front, front, rear front and rear bar lips side skirts spoiler ss trim the ss dash, dash badge and your side mold the, the, the side red molds. molds that run the whole way around them so you spent a whole lot of time on those because i know you come over and checked out what i you thought i might know about it so yep. you ended up sanding them and polishing them sanding and polishing them and they, they, they turned come out pretty really good, good. yeah they're cool. all up there wrapped up in plastic ready yep. for when we get ready to we it. get when you get to that yeah so it'll now be a ss on the outside yep and then on the inside so the trim um from what you're telling me so they're a totally different they're, shape a, they're a different shape foam. So we've front got and back. Foam now, so yep. eventually Simon will get those to, to yep. do a retrim on them. So Simon's already done the door cards for me. But I quite find it quite interesting that this trim is what I had in the Piney Coupe. Yeah. Back in 1998. Yep. Um, so these go on the door trims, and then obviously these seats now be retrimmed. So you've, you've hunted down some factory fabric. Yep, Simon um, did. Simon did. Simon did. Simon okay. did. So he'll get them stitched up and put them on. So that'll give you the SS trim as well. Yep, so, the, and and with an SS in one of these being an SS Commodore, it's not a Calais, it's not a Bellina, it's an SS Commodore. So the fact that this has got hot cold heater dials, yep. being an executive, is what an SS had. It didn't have Calais climate control. Right. It didn't have a three window dash like a Calais so had. So it's the perfect scenario. So, so basically, as far as what this car has accessory wise, once we assess the trim and the kit on the outside, physically looking at it, you won't be able to tell that it's not a genuine one. Okay. Because cool. everything about the car itself is right for the SS model. Yep. Just what the SS had that this doesn't is ABS brakes, an independent rear, and depending on the particular SS airbag or not airbag. Right. So that's all in the process now. So we're going to end up with a third edition by the sound of it. So yep. In the meantime, though, you managed to talk in to Frankie down at yep. um, Frankie Car Audio. Yep, Frankie's Auto Electrics at Oak Auto Electrics at Oak Flats, yep. and um, worked out a system to put some sound in it. So you've gone with double din. Yep. So oh. VRs were a single din unit. Right. But that is a double din unit, which has got a single din rear. Mm -hmm. So we've managed to get that into the dash without cutting up heater boxes and things. Cool. So you've got that in, and you've gone what? All new speakers, tweeters. Yeah, splits in the front, 
normal speakers in the back, sub in the boot, five channel amp in the boot to run it all. Yep, sounding good. So yep. if you need something, talk to Frankie. Yep, that's it. He's the man. He's the man. And like you say, you've got a little bit of work to do and we've been playing with some LEDs yourself over there. So a little bit to do with the shifter. Yep. Um, what's left? I believe heater hoses and shifter, and then it's time to see the engineer. So what are you sort of working on with the heater hoses? I know you said to me you've sort of bought a bit of everything to try and make some sort of hybrid setup to get it all in there. Yep, so I'll show you what we've got. So a VR Commodore just ran an in-out on-off heater tap, but an LS still needs to retain water flow through the engine even when the heater's turned off. So an LS heater tap has got four outlets. So when the heater's turned off, it just recirculates back to the engine rather than going through the heater and then back to the engine. So we somehow need to make that fit in here somewhere, but the LS engine being a little wider than what this car ever had, it's very close to the exhaust. So I'm not exactly sure so what we're gonna sure do. not sure where you're going. So that's today's job? That's today's job to work out, hopefully find a way and get it done. So looking good, so we churned, Everything's mechanically working. Yep. Um, the next stage now is to sort out those last few things for the engineer and go down that process. Yep. And then um, give Joel a call for a bit of paint, probably. 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 Definitely, we need to get the engineering side of things done first because yep. once we pull it apart and paint it, we don't want to have to make any changes. No. We want it all to be right first. Good idea. And once, once then everything is right and it's a pull it apart and paint it, then when we make time, that's what we'll try and do. All right, Dave. Well, you might have to wait another year for that video, though. <laughs> thanks for your time, mate, and thanks for passing on what you're learning to all those people out in YouTube land, because yep. it is a bit of a challenge, and I know that you know Commodores and LSs or LSs in anything are the flavour of the month at the moment, and yep. I've had a lot of requests. So if you like what you're seeing, subscribe to the channel. If you ask the questions, it'll take me a little while to get back, because I've got to come over and see Dave and get the answer, because he's not necessarily on YouTube very often. No. But um, we're happy to do that if we can help. So thanks for joining us. Thanks for your time again, Dave. No and we'll catch us all later. Right on, mate. See you.